I welcome folks to our lecture on humidity, our only online lecture for Unit 4. So why don't we get started right away? So a couple things about humidity. Now, we know from our last chapter and looking at phase changes that air contains evaporated water vapor, that you have water coming from a lot of different sources like lakes, streams, oceans, and evaporation occurs at temperatures below the boiling point. So anywhere between the freezing point of water, which is zero degrees Celsius, and the boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, you're going to get some sort of evaporated water vapor. And this water vapor, along with the temperature of the air, can be very helpful in determining the type of weather that we have. So if we take a look, if we want to define what humidity is, it's a measurement of how much water vapor is in the air. So what I'd like you to do is click the link that just popped up and learn a little bit more about humidity and the different types of humidity before moving on to the next slide. Okay, so hopefully you found that video to be a, a bit inform, uh, informative. And there's a couple things that I want to touch on, remember back from last unit, about water vapor and about evaporation. One of the things that we know is the amount of water vapor that is in the air can change with temperature and that has a lot to do with energy and the more energy we have the more water vapor that the air can hold. So the closer we get to the boiling point the more we know the rate of evaporation is going to occur. So hot air can hold a lot more water vapor than cold air. And that's just something to consider when we're talking about humidity. So we actually have two different types of humidity, as you noted here in the video. The first type that we mentioned has to do with absolute humidity. And absolute humidity is an actual amount of water vapor is in the air. It's the exact measurement. So we know exactly how much water vapor we have in terms of mass. We know how much space something takes up. So if we look at that, it's very similar to density. It's also very similar to concentration. So we're essentially looking at the density or the concentration of water vapor that's in the air. So the way that I find absolute humidity is our mass of our water vapor in grams divided by our volume of air. So why don't we take a look here at a real quick example, and I'm not going to take a whole lot of time with this. So for, the, for an example of calculating absolute humidity, I would want to get my pen here, and let's say we have uh, 12 grams of water vapor, and that is evaporated into three cubic meters of air. And again, this is just a direct measurement. We take our mass, which is 12 grams, divided by our volume, which is three cubic meters. And that's going to give me an absolute humidity of four grams per cubic meter. Pretty simple and straightforward. And again, has a lot to do with density and concentration. Now, the other type of humidity that you saw is what we refer to as relative humidity. And this is out of the two, probably the more common one, the one that you may have heard of, because this is what's used on the weather report. And if you look at the graphic there on the right-hand side, you have a current relative humidity for the United States. Now, what relative humidity does is it compares. It compares how much water vapor we have in the air to that maximum amount. And as they mentioned there in the video, that is what we call either the saturation point or that dew point. Now, relative humidity can be measured or calculated depending on how we're taking those measurements. But again, we are still getting the comparison of how much water vapor we have, very similar to when we looked at uh, percent concentration and solubility. And we just like what we did with percent concentration, because it is a comparison, we express it as a percentage. So when we have 50% relative humidity, we know the air is holding 50% of its maximum amount of water vapor. And one of the things that I want to point out is this can change with temperature. The dew point that we have the maximum amount of water vapor that the air can hold changes with temperature. So the higher the temperature, the higher the dew point can be. Okay, folks, we know it's our favorite time of the notes here, and it's time to take a brain break. So why don't you get up from your chair and move around a bit, maybe do some jumping jacks, maybe some sit-ups. And today's brain break and Chuck Norris fact of the day for you math people, Chuck Norris can divide by zero. And I hope everyone loves that one. 
All right, so moving on. So how do I measure relative humidity? If it's one of the ways that I can find. Well, the way we use and we measure relative humidity is we use something called a sling psychrometer. And we use that sling psychrometer with a chart of relative humidity. And basically, a sling psychrometer is an instrument that has two thermometers, one we call the wet bulb thermometer, the other one we call the dry bulb thermometer. And we compare those two temperatures on our chart. Now, when you go to look and read your pre-lab for next class's lab, you'll learn a little bit more about the sling psychrometer. But because water, when it evaporates, cools a thermometer or cools off the liquid, the more evaporation we get, the cooler it's going to be. So the dry bulb is going to measure the actual air temperature. There is no evaporation. But the wet bulb, because it's saturated with water, as it starts to evaporate, the more and more it evaporates, the drier the air is, the more of a temperature change we're going to get. So when we look on our chart of relative humidity, the more of a difference, the drier the air. And from that chart, I can find what my relative humidity is going to be. So let's take a look here at an example of how I determine what my relative humidity is. So what I need to look at here is two things. On the left-hand side, you have your air temperatures, and that's given in degrees Celsius. So we look on what our dry bulb temperature is, and that's our exact measurement. And the example that you're, they're giving here is 22 degrees Celsius. Now, up on the top is the difference between the wet and the dry bulb temperature. It's not the actual temperature that you have. You have to look to see what is the difference between what I have on my dry bulb and what I have on my wet bulb. In this example, the highlighted part, since our dry bulb temperature was 22 degrees and we see the wet bulb difference is 6 degrees, that means that our wet bulb had to have a temperature of 16 degrees Celsius because we have a difference. One important thing to know, you are not going to have a wet bulb temperature be greater than that of the dry bulb temperature because you're always at least going to get a little bit of evaporation and if you don't get any evaporation that means that the air is holding its maximum amount of water vapor. So now we look on our chart here we see we have a dry bulb temperature of 22 degrees we find a wet bulb difference of 6 degrees and where the two meet that gives us our humidity or our relative humidity as 53%. And I can find that for any temperature that I have based on a relative humidity chart. So when you look at your relative humidity chart for your lab, you're going to see something that looks like this. Now, the other type of way we can find relative humidity is to be able to calculate it. And to calculate our relative humidity, you need to know two things. Well, you need to know what the absolute humidity is, and that is our actual amount. We already know from earlier in our lecture here that we calculate absolute humidity by mass of water vapor over volume of air. And you need to know what the saturation point or the dew point is at that particular temperature. And that's going to be a given value. That will be something that I will give to you or that you can look up on a chart to figure out what that saturation point is. So to re express my relative humidity, I take my absolute humidity, which is how much water vapor I have in the air, compare it to my saturation point, which is my maximum amount of water vapor in the air, and because I'm expressing it in terms of a percentage, I'm going to multiply it by 100. So we could use an example of, let's say that the air is holding 15 grams per cubic meter of water vapor, and the saturation point at this temperature, let's say at 25 degrees Celsius, let's just use this as an example of 30 grams per cubic meter. So the top here, I'm looking, this is the actual amount of water vapor that I have. The bottom here is my maximum amount of water vapor the air can hold per cubic meter at that particular temperature. Notice that we have the same units on top and bottom, so that means those units are going to cancel. We are then going to multiply by 100 to express it in terms of a percentage, and we would get 
a absolute, or I'm sorry, a relative humidity here of 50%. And again, that means the air is holding 50% of its maximum amount of water vapor. When we reach 100%, that means that we're going to have some form of precipitation, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, hail, any of the types of precipitation that, that we have. So now, what does this all mean? Now that we know about relative humidity, now that we know it concerns the weather, what are some things that we have to count on dealing with humidity? Well, first of all, as I mentioned before, it determines the type of weather, whether we have a dry day or we have a humid day outside. If we reach 100%, we're going to get some form of precipitation. It can also establish our comfort level that we have inside of our houses, so, or even when we're outside. So, you know, typically when we have a percentage between 25 and 60%, that's a fairly comfortable level. If we're below 25%, that means the air is too dry and, and maybe I get my skin starts to dry out, especially in the wintertime when you have a lot of dry air. But when it's higher than 60%, that's when the humidity, it gets too hot. And you're going to see a link here that's going to pop up that's going to talk a little bit more about that and has to do from Khan Academy and LeBron James. So after the conclusion of this video or before you end the video here, get, take a click on that link and to see why that comfort level changes with that humidity. And for all of our people, we all know I worry about my hair. It can also have to do with our hair emergencies and we'll talk more about that in class. So this is the end of our notes. Uh, if you have any questions, please make sure that you write them down on your note sheet somewhere, and we will try to address them in our next class. Look forward to seeing everyone.